In this presentation, I'm going to look at how price elasticity varies along a demand curve. In this graph here, we can see that we have a red demand curve, and the midpoint is marked with the letter M. Now, we've shown the demand curve extending uh, to cut the vertical axis and also to intersect on the horizontal axis just to make uh, make it clear later on that there's a relationship between uh, elasticity of demand and revenue. Now at the midpoint we say that demand is unit elastic. elastic. Uh, it has a coefficient value of 1 whereas to the left or above the midpoint we say that demand is price elastic and to the right of the midpoint we say that demand is price inelastic. So the value of the coefficient varies along the demand curve greater than 1 to, to the left of M, less than 1 to the right of M and unit elastic in the middle. Now if we actually calculated this uh, coefficient we would see that it should really carry a negative sign because there's a negative relationship between price and quantity. So we have here uh, uh, when price rises, quantity falls, and, and vice versa. But by convention, we ignore the negative sign and we just look at the absolute value of the coefficient. Now, how is this related to revenue. Well, if we look at the demand curve again, and we look at the point at which the demand curve intersects the vertical axis at $6, we see that at $6 the price is too high for consumers and they don't buy anything. So total revenue is 6 times 0, and we can mark that off here as an X at the origin here, indicating that at zero price, at six dollars price, we have zero revenue. On the other hand, if we look at the other side and we say, all right, what about at a zero price? Well, at a zero price, there's only a maximum of 12 units purchased according to this demand curve. So price equals zero times quantity equals 12, we get zero again. So we can mark that down at this point here with an X. So two points we have already in the relationship between revenue and price elasticity. Let's drop the price from 6 down to 5 and see what happens. Well, at $5, we can read off that we purchase two units, or the market purchased two units, 5 by 2 is $10, so we can mark the revenue associated with $5 price with an X as well. Drop the price again to $4, and we see that we have 16 revenue. 4 times 4 is 16. Drop the price to 3. 3 times 6 is 18. Mark that off with an X. Down to $2, we have 2 times 8 is 16. Ah, so the, the revenue has now fallen when we get to the right of point M. Mark that with an X. Drop the price to 1. 1 times 10 is 10. So we mark that with an X. And we can see that looking at this, the way in which these X's are marked on the bottom graph and joining them, we, sh we show that when the elasticity of demand is greater than 1, it was to the points left of M, when the price goes down, then total revenue rises. The slope goes up. However, when, if the price were to go up from the midpoint, then revenue would in fact fall. We move down. When we reach the midpoint, the revenue curve peaks out at 18 
dollars of revenue and so total revenue is constant whereas when we move to the right of M then demand is price inelastic and when price falls we move down in this direction then total revenue falls we move down this curve when when price rises on the other hand total revenue rises as well so when price rises towards M then total revenue is also rising okay now students often confuse price elasticity with the slope of a demand curve. Let's look at this situation. Does this steep curve indicate that the demand along that curve is price inelastic? Well, no, uh, because the curve is actually not complete, really. If we mark the midpoint off as M and we extend the curve up, then we see that Points above M are price elastic. So the portion from M upwards is price elastic. And of course, uh, if we ex on the extended curve, it's also price elastic. Whereas points below M are price inelastic. And so we must uh, recognize that although points uh, that were originally shown in the demand curve are are actually price inelastic. The general rule is that we must not uh, interpret the uh, or associate slope with the elasticity because the, the price elasticity varies all along the demand curve. Here's another example. We draw a flat curve and the same applies to this flat curve. If we extend the curve and draw in the midpoint then we can see that as shown most of the curve is price elastic but price elasticity effectively varies all along the curve and so we uh, we can't really say that a flat curve is an elastic curve or price elastic curve. 